Hi everyone, Rob here again at Power Learning Solutions. In this video, I am going to answer a question from a colleague about how to use Google Forms to administer some peer evaluation surveys during live in-class presentations. Now, in this case, I have a class where I have 30 students. They're broken down into seven smaller groups. And in um, each one of these groups, they're going to go into a breakout room and they're going to have uh, some time to give an in-class presentation on their EdTech exploration portfolios. Your presentation could be on any topic, but in this case, it's on their portfolios. Um, these categories here, the, the link, the post, the coherence, writing, APA formatting, I'm going to evaluate all of these when I review their portfolios that they submit. In their presentation, they have to pick one of their posts and they have to present about it and share what they like about it. There's some critical evaluations about the tool that the, they're evaluating and um, give some ideas for use for it in class. So I'm going to give students, uh, their classmates, a chance to give them a score using a rubric. And I'll use that to inform the uh, the score that I give them about their presentation mark. Uh, I can't possibly uh, fit 30 of these presentations into a one hour class. So that's why I'm breaking them down into smaller groups. They're going to be in breakout rooms and they'll each have a chance to give that score. So how do I administer that using Google Forms? Well, I have an example of a Google Forms set up here. And this is a branching form. So when uh, a student gets into that, let's say I'm a student who's in group one, breakout room one, I would choose uh, group one here. And then I would come down to this list and I would see all of my group members, in this case, Alana, Ashley, Bethany, and Brian. And I would give them the score one, two, or three. I also have the evaluation criteria here for what counts as a score, as a score of zero, one, or two. So it's uh, it's quite easy for me to just go in, select DigiAccess 1 as my group, and then select uh, the score for each one of these, and then hit Submit. So how do I set all of these up? Well, I have seven groups, as I mentioned, and I am going to show you how to set up that seventh group, and then we'll do the configuration so that we have all of the branching. So to add my seventh group, I'm actually going to uh, come down to my final question here. I'm going to click on the new section, the add a section symbol here, and I will call this group seven presenters to mirror everything that's up above here. Group seven presenters, and I don't have any other text in here. Now I'm going to just duplicate this criteria here, the evaluation criteria. I could just click on uh, the plus sign here and I can add a uh, title and description with, uh, with this, but I'm gonna just duplicate this one in this case. And I'll drag that down here so I don't have to retype everything. And now I'm gonna add my question with my list of students and the, uh, the check boxes for scoring them. So I'm going to click on the plus sign here. It's going to add a multiple choice question. I am going to change this one to a multiple choice grid. Now in my row, in my rows, I'm going to get the names of the students. So I'm going to come back to my student list here. This is going to be Sally, Stephen, Sydney, and Whitney. I'll come back to my form. Sally. Stephen. Sydney and Whitney. And now I just need to actually enter my scores here. Zero, one, or two. And that's all there is to this. Now I'm going to make this a required response in each row. So I'm going to go back to each of these here and make sure I have required response for each row checked off. So it, they must add a score for every student. If one of their classmates doesn't show up, they obviously score them as a zero for not having given a presentation that day. So now to set up this first question as a branching question so that it takes students to the correct list of peers to evaluate, I'm simply going to click on the three dots down here uh, at the bottom of the question next to required and select the go to section based on answer. 
Now it's going to give me a little drop down next to each of these. I'm going to select group one presenters for DigiAccess one and just go down through the entire list until I have them all lined up with the correct group, groups one through seven. So now uh, when students select one of these, it'll take them to the next answer here. Now, I don't need to do anything with these individual questions here. However, uh, I do need to change what happens after they submit their scores for each row. I don't want them to go to the next section and evaluate the next group. So after section two, I'm going to want them to submit the form. So I just need to go to each of these and go to submit form. And this final one here will also go to submit form. There's no other options available. So what does this look like when a student is actually submitting one of these grades? I can preview this by clicking the preview button here. And now let's say I select Digi Access 2, click on next. It's going to bring me to the list, Cortland, Daniel, Dylan, and Emily. And I can just score each of them as they present hit submit, and it has recorded my response. Now there are lots of ways I can share this form with my students. Uh, the easiest way is simply to give them a link. I click the send button here, I get the link, and I typically hit the shorten URL, so it's a much easier URL for them. And I can copy that link. In this case, I am going to put that onto my uh, clipboard here and save that link for later. I could also grab the embed code. If I wanted to put this into a, uh, into a page in my learning management system, I could grab the embed code and I'll save that here as well. I could easily embed that into uh, Canvas or Moodle or Blackboard or D2L, Brightspace, any learning management system. I could use that code and embed it right into a page. I could also take this code here and I could generate a QR code for this. Uh, my favorite go-to for this is QR stuff. And this is QR stuff, the QR code generator. I just put the URL in here. It generates the QR code for me and I can download this QR code uh, and save it to share with my students. So I'm gonna take that and put that right here and save that for later on. So I could embed that QR code into a, um, into a PowerPoint presentation. And I could ask my students, just scan this code. You can go to, uh, to this survey on your phone and you could answer it there. Now I have a um, Microsoft Teams group open here. I use this for some of my classes at Cape Breton University. And I can easily start up a meeting and show you how I could share this code during a live meeting. So I'm in my meeting here now. I'm going to turn off the camera and I can go to the chat area and I can simply share the URL with my students here. So I will get that link and they can share, they can uh, use this link and directly from the chat. Now they can access this form. It will open up the form for them. Another way that I can do this in here, I'm going to stop this meeting come back into my team. What I'm actually going to do for my teams in this case is give them a tab in their private breakout groups with that form so that they can uh, watch the presentations in a meeting and come right in here and fill it out. So I'm going to click on the plus sign. I'm going to click on add a website and this will be peer evaluation form and I just paste the link in here hit save, and it's going to embed this form right in here for them. So in this case, they come to their breakout rooms, their team captain will start the meeting, they do their presentations, they can open up this tab, and they can, uh, they can rate their classmates away. 
Now, my students have given their in-class presentations. I want to pull these scores that they've given each other, and uh, I want to use that information myself uh, when I'm when I'm determining the final scores for my students on their uh, on their term project. I can view the responses in here, but I can also go to the spreadsheet version of it. And I've got one response already recorded here per row. In this case, I've got responses for DigiAccess 2. And I've got a score recorded for each of the presenters in this group. So that is uh, Cortland, Daniel, Dylan, and Emily. So what I can actually do, I can download this CSV file, the, this spreadsheet file, to my, uh, to my computer. I can then sort based on group to make it easier for myself. So I can have all of group one, group two, group three, group four. Then I can just find the students and I can get the average scores for, for Cortland, Daniel, Dylan, and Emily. And I can use that to determine the score that I enter into my final scoring uh, spreadsheet here under this column for the, uh, for the four presenters.